we can break down the antiemetics by the pathway receptors they act on that cause nausea. A summary table is included in the handout for this segment. We'll go through each class one by one. First, we have the antimuscarinic agents. An example here is scopolamine, which acts on the vestibular pathway. Next, we have antihistamines like diphenhydramine and meclizine. These also target vestibular input, so are best for treatment of motion sickness, vertigo, and migraine-induced nausea. Next are the dopaminergic antagonists. These are commonly used in the hospital, and there are several types. The vomiting center receives input from the chemoreceptor trigger zone, and other areas via dopaminergic pathways, which are blocked by these medications. A commonly used drug here is metoclopramide. It has both antiemetic and prokinetic effects, which we will discuss in later MedMastery lessons. The antipsychotics that do double duty as antiemetics are also in this category. Examples are haloperidol and chlorpromazine, among others. These are less commonly used for nausea because there are alternatives without their adverse effect profile. Finally, promethazine is a unique antiemetic that has properties of multiple drug classes. It is a weak dopamine antagonist, but also has antihistaminergic and antimuscarinic activity. Next, we have the serotonin antagonists. Commonly used medications in this class are ondansetron, and granisetron. They block serotonergic input into the vomiting center from both the chemoreceptor trigger zone and the afferent pathways from GI and cardiac input. A newer class of medications are the neurokinin-1 or NK1 antagonists. These act via blocking the NK1 pathway from the chemoreceptor trigger zone and for this reason are primarily used for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. There are only two medications in this class, a prepotent, which is the oral form, and fos a prepotent, which is the IV form. Now we get into other medications that are not primarily used as antiemetics, but are nice alternatives when you need additional control. All of these are centrally acting via unknown or complex mechanisms. Glucocorticoids are the first. The most commonly used drug here is dexamethasone, which is used as an adjunct antiemetic for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. Benzodiazepines also act centrally to reduce nausea. They work primarily through their anxiolytic function and are thought to reduce anticipatory nausea and vomiting. While any benzos can be used here, the most common examples are lorazepam and alprazolam. Finally, we have the cannabinoids. The main example here is dronabinol. Cannabinoids are considered alternative therapy for nausea. They act on the cannabinoid 1 or CB1 receptor in the vagal mediated pathway of nausea. Another class of medications worth mentioning is prokinetic agents. Antiemetics may help with the urge to vomit but prokinetics can be helpful when nausea and vomiting are caused by a motility disorder like gastroparesis. Metoclopramide, a dopamine antagonist in particular, can do double duty as both an antiemetic and a promotility agent. Domperidone is another less widely used example. This prokinetic action works through different mechanisms involving vagal and central serotonin and dopamine receptors. You might have also heard of erythromycin, a macrolide antibiotic having prokinetic effects. Erythromycin acts by activating motilin receptors in the gut smooth muscle, which might have an effect on vagal pathways involved in emesis. It is thought to improve nausea and vomiting when taken before meals. However, it is not great for long-term use because patients experience tachyphylaxis. With prolonged use, there is downregulation of the motilin receptor, so the therapy is less effective. There are a few studies that compare common antiemetics in specific disorders. So often the best approach is to choose a medication 
that targets the pathway you think might be most active. For labyrinthine disorders like migraines, Meniere's disease, or motion sickness, antimuscarinic or antihistamines tend to be the best. For chemotherapy-induced nausea, NK1 or 5-HT3 antagonists can be helpful. For post-operative nausea and vomiting, 5-HT3 antagonists, like ondansetron, tend to work well. For nausea related to cortical stimuli like pain or anxiety, a centrally acting agent like a glucocorticoid, benzodiazepine, or cannabinoid might be good options. Just note that many of these medications come with significant adverse effects, which we will discuss in later lessons. Also, note that you don't have to stick to one class of medications. Say your patient has chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. Recall that this is often evoked by the chemoreceptor trigger zone. So you might target the serotonin pathway, starting with ondansetron. If the patient continues to have nausea, despite regular use of ondansetron, you might add on a dopamine antagonist like metoclopramide. Then, if they continue to have symptoms, you might reach for an NK1 antagonist like a prepotent. There is not much evidence to suggest superiority of one regimen over another, so you often have to find the right combination of medications for your patient. Lastly, here's one neat trick that is cost-effective and involves negligible side effects. Smelling isopropyl alcohol. You can find this easily in the form of an alcohol swab. There was a study in 2018 that found that sniffing alcohol swabs was superior to oral ondansetron in treating nausea in the hospital. It's low cost and easy to try with few drawbacks, so it's a nice, simple trick to try first. Now that we've reviewed the common classes of antiemetics, let's review available routes in the next MedMastery lesson. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MedMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MedMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.